good. Uh, we're going to push this to Facebook as well. So just give us a second to get that going and we'll start looking through the questions that came in. Uh, Travis, anything you want to start off with while I'm working on this? Oh, no. I mean, so this is a little bit different of a live stream. Normally we do playthroughs um, since we're talking about Omen, which has, you know, a seven year history. We thought that we would answer some questions from people, give a little bit more insight into some of the decisions that we made. Obviously, it's a little bit more of a undertaking when you're taking, um, when you're tackling a product that has a prior history, even if that's in a more boutique format. And uh, you're trying to, you know, our goal with Omen was to bring it to a broader stage, a bigger stage, uh, get it the credit it most certainly deserves. So we wanted to talk about some things relative to that instead of just going into mechanical stuff. All righty. Um, let me just go ahead and pull up. I'm going to pull up on Facebook so we can see the questions from both sides. Make sure that we're getting everything covered. And we'll get started here. All righty. Hello, everyone. We are officially on, on Facebook and on Kickstarter. And our first question. So I'm going to go ahead and show the question to the audience. I'm a huge fan of everything small box games. I have a complete set of everything that has been released in Omen so far. Could you please explain what updates are being made to the reissued products? Is any of the old art being replaced? Are any cards being significantly changed or removed? What are the major, major gameplay changes and how realistic is the October delivery date? Whoa, that's a lot of questions. <laughs> Scott, right, so we'll get that started. Let's go up a little bit so I yep. can see where you started. Sorry. Um, so complete set. could you explain what updates are being made? So actually we have a, I have a little uh, article that I wrote that we'll be posting on BGG that sort of goes into some of the production uh, notes regarding Omen. Uh, you know, the first thing that I think a lot of people don't realize is John was literally hand making these games and sending them like he would have the the parts sent to his house and he would assemble them and he would he would nail them out. So therefore, he had no real overhead other than his own time. Um, uh, so that's why, you know, there are things like the metal coins whenever we actually just did a. Um, <laughs> I just, for my own, out of my own curiosity, if I did the minimum print run on all three of these guys back here, we would be shipping almost three tons of coins, 6,000 pounds of coins, which is a lot more expensive than people think uh, when you're trying to do a game to scale versus I know I have this many backers, I can order this exact amount of stuff and I can ship it. So. Um, Specifically, the things that we wanted to change, uh, Scott, was that we wanted to make sure that the game was uh, palatable for a larger market, right? So John's market was very boutique. He had boxes that didn't have any art or text or anything on them. Um, they, they didn't have inserts. Uh, they, they were, it was a, by, I'm a huge fan of John's also, uh, naturally, so I have a lot of his games, and, and it really worked for that format, but we we kind of envisioned Omen as being this more epic, broad scale type of game, uh, and to, to that end, we wanted to make sure that we represented the game and we conveyed that epic sort of vibe that the game has, and we didn't feel that the game accomplished that as well as it could with just cards, so... For example, when you play Omen with just cards, it's kind of stuffs out and you decide where there are piles of things and you're putting your cards out. But there's no really sort of regimented, um, uh, tidy play area. So the first thing we thought was, and this, this was kind of inspired by uh, Seven Wonders Duel, which was to create a player board that told players, these are the three cities. And so, you know, your guys are on this side and my guys on this side. Yes, John had these city cards but when you have cards that are essentially the same size and all you're doing is turning them uh, sideways, it wasn't really, it didn't fe create that feeling that we thought. Further, we thought that it would be, you know, so this is a mock-up, obviously this is smaller than it would really be, but as you can see, we have a player board. And instead of these, wow, well, it's really weird to see my own reflection and my hand is not in <laughs> um, So rather than having the reward cards, and this was something that I thought actually that I, did, I didn't like about the old Omen, um, was that you had the reward cards in your hand and then there were these rules like you, you had a larger hand size because of them. And if anything would ever cause you to discard cards, then you would 
you couldn't discard the reward cards. It just felt like a, a bit cumbersome. So our solution was to make these tiles. And in doing so, the, the thought was that the tiles would sit atop the city and you get a little bit of a dimension. And, you know, it's only, uh, it's a little bit, but it still, it, it gives an elevated presence to the to the game. Um, when you play, you put a war, a war token on top of it to denote if it's war torn or if it's peaceful. That's also like um, a thing that kind of helps combat some of the memory aspect, like having to remember to check, having a physical component that every turn you know that you might have to flip adds to your ability to process that information a little easier. Um, so, so I think the main primary difference in the components is the board and that the reward cards become tiles. We did go in, um, in terms of the cards, we didn't change a lot of the art, the unit art, in fact, no unit art changed in the game for Reign of War. We changed the carries units in, uh, Edge of the Aegean. We did update the reward tiles, well, reward card art and the feats. Um, we didn't feel as though they personified this idea of gods by just showing a Spartan helmet with two swords behind it or, you know, this sort of like luminescent ball for Hera uh, to, to denote um, her power. We wanted to actually show this kind of personification of the gods so that you, they felt like they were more grand, there were more characters, um, and that they were more alive um, instead of this sort of abstracted notion. And, and that's kind of like where I'm going with all this. The original Omen release, John was very constrained by his format, which was largely cards. Um, you know, things like when a unit became, enra became enraged, you'd have to flip it over and remember what that meant. You would have to, um, the carries units and edge of the Aegean, you'd have to flip them over and remember that they were worth victory points at the end of the game. We tried to take some of this sort of uh, inherent rules in, uh, burden off of the components or sorry, off of the players and put them onto components rather so that they go, oh, when I flip this over, it's exalted and I gain a victory point token. Now I know what my score is. My opponent knows what my score is. There's no, oh crap, I forgot that when you flip that card over, it was this and now I lost the game because I'm one point off. It, it felt like the game had a little bit um, in its attempt to be clever and, and sort of conservative with its use of components it didn't accomplish some of its goals. And we, and we thought that we could kind of elevate that. And, and John agreed with us. Um, all of these ideas were vetted through John. There's not one thing in this game, not one thing in this game that John has not approved or wanted. Right. Um, we did change some of the terminology on the cards also. Uh, for example, um, in, you know, when the game was originally released, beasts meant that they were two units. Uh, as time went on, you know, in Edge of the Aegean, we saw automatons and, and then with, we have sphinxes and, and fires of the east. And what we wanted to do was we wanted to, instead of just saying everything has to be a beast that counts as two units in the future, we said, let's come up with some keywords. So we, we, we made sure to go in and kind of streamline the language of the cards. They kind of, some of the old cards really over explained things. Uh, there wasn't a lot of... John's here backing you up. That's correct. He yeah. says so. Yep. Thanks, John. Yep. Thanks, John. And so what we wanted to do was get in there and use kind of, you know, this game is really caters toward the LCG crowd, people who play Magic the Gathering, people who understand what keywords are. Um, and, and, and it's an ability to save time and once again, take some of that sort of burden off of the, um, off of the players and just simplify things. So um, there are some cards that became better. So some cards that reference just beasts, now they reference, quote, colossal units. Yes, it is a shameless plug, but we spelled the word correctly on the cards, not in the, not our company name. Um, and what a colossal unit is, is it's a unit that counts as two units. It's a large unit. It, it makes more sense, I think, than it, it makes a lot more sense to do that than it does to say everything is a beast from here to eternity. It really kind of it creatively put us in a box. So we wanted to rectify that. Um, I think I answered just one of Scott's so, questions. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So I think that some of his are going to be, um, most of that is, is what you said. So the real estate, I'll answer the last question and we can, we're going to take one from Facebook. But, um, the, I think the last question that we didn't, uh, catch up for Scott was, is how realistic is the October delivery date? And we are very confident with that. Western Legends has been moving along great. Our first campaign from January, uh, Kamisama as well, as well as Imperius, everything currently, we're, we're actually in the process of putting together some updates for the backers of those campaigns, to let them know how things are going. But for us, everything's going really great. Um, so we are very confident that October will be 
just fine for Omen. Uh, and we'll keep you guys updated along the way. So, um, and, and just, and just, yeah, to, to add to that, and, and I don't expect anyone to know who I am. Um, I've been working in the industry for five years. I've published, this is the 19th game I've published. I've worked on over 30 games. I myself have designed games. So I, I have quite a bit of experience. I've delivered two games in my, of the 15 games that I've delivered, two of the games were delivered late and six weeks was the latest one of them was. And that was during the whole Shenzhen freight bankruptcy thing where everyone was scrambling to get their stuff on boats. And then a tsunami literally happened two days later and that caused a six week delay. I've also delivered two games early, one of which uh, I delivered two months early um, which is kind of unheard of. So uh, I can understand from some backers perspective, like, holy crap, you guys are really putting out a lot of stuff. No one's really kind of done what we're doing. No one's had this really robust, aggressive schedule. But the thing everyone needs to know is, you know, you're seeing Omen right now. It was a year ago that John and I first talked and we signed um, uh, all of the small box stuff. And so we've, we've put a lot of initial uh, pre-production work and planning into all of this stuff. This isn't like we said, let's make Omen a month ago, and we're just kind of grabbing at straws. Um, we've got a lot of stuff going on. So uh, real quick before we move on to our first question from Facebook, uh, we've got Robert here. Thank you so much, Robert. Appreciate the comment. Moving to the all-in, uh, even though you own the Omega Edition, I think that you're going to be really pleased with that. Um, we do think that, uh, you know, if you're an old ba uh, old backer of John's games from previous editions, that you'll want to upgrade uh, to these new ones. So I think that that's a great move there. Hey, Nate uh, from Gamelin is on. Thanks so much. We are cranking it out. Appreciate the support. And uh, Mr. Gamer. So yes, a few months of each other. They're all cranking right along. So we're going to move on to our next question. Keep this moving because we've got more coming in on here as well. We've got uh, Chad Sui from uh, Facebook asking, uh, saying, I have long believed that Omen deserves to be in every uh, Magic the Gathering store. That's a really nice compliment. Any chance we could see small point of purchase display stands make their way to uh, FLGS shelves, much like what we saw with games such as Star Realms? Um, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, I that that's why we're doing this. Uh, Omen, in my opinion, Omen is one of the best two-player games. It's personally one of my favorite games of all time. I'm literally not saying that. Uh, whenever we sat down with our partners and we said, hey, who do we want to work with? John was literally the first person I said, I want to work with John Cloudus. I think John Cloudus is one of the best game designers alive. And I think Omen is incredible. And uh, yes, we do love Omen. We, we love, love Omen. We love it. We love it. I mean, like genuinely really love the game. I own the game five years before any of this uh, happened. I've, I've owned multiple editions. It's, it's an incredible game. Um, so it's a privilege to be working on this. And, and, and the thing that I think that, that, you know, and I understand from fans of John's because John worked in this really personal boutique way. Um, but, you know, John is a talented guy. And, and a big part of why we're doing this is is John's name needs to it deserves to be writ large across the sky. Absolutely. He's uh, he's the guy is one of the best game designers alive. Like yeah, genuinely, yeah. I, I've worked with tons. I've worked with some of the biggest and the brightest. Uh, and John is one of the best. He's he's consummately professional. He's infinitely creative. He's got great taste. And he's just an all-around great guy. I'm, I'm happy to say he's a, he's become a friend in the last year. But but part of that process means that we have to make changes to things that people might love about John's old format and put it in a new format in order for the game to be to have an opportunity to reach a larger audience. We can't sell a game with, you know, I can't ship six thousand pounds of metal coins across the ocean in a box with no art on it, you know, and keep it in the format that everyone came to sort of uh, like about what John did. And, and and the thing that's important to remember, if John wanted to do that, he would be still doing that. He wouldn't be working with us. Yeah. Um, so the, the point of all this is to give Omen a genuine restart, a reboot and say, this is Omen. This is the new Omen. This is what Omen will be. We're not going to re-release Omen Reign of War a year from now or two years from now and say, okay, everyone, it's now we're retheming it to be, you know, Robotech or something. Sure. This is what Omen is. This is what Omen will be. We're going to start to see new cultures. We're going to have continued support for the game, continued content. Because I, to to the comment that you just made about it should be in every store. I absolutely. totally agree. I think it is absolutely a perfect game for people who enjoy those types of that type of kind of competitive head-to-head -head game. Okay. Mike waves on Facebook. Thanks for uh, checking <laughs> in. Uh, we're going to show the next question to the audience on here from uh, Chad. Uh, oh, let's see. This is this is Chad we just saw on Facebook. He's in both places. 
Uh, Kajan beat the Rad Chad in an Omen Championship of the World Showdown, and how can we make this contest between the two of them become a reality? I hear they only live a couple hours apart. Well, John other. John is like most game designers. He's great at making them and bad at playing them. So he, <laughs> we had Rodney Smith come to town, and I think Rodney scored something crazy like 20 points while John was sitting there sort of scratching his head, embarrassed, but. John's in the comments, guys, if you didn't notice yeah. that. He's saying uh, it's it's probably not likely, uh, and, he, and he, he loses a lot. He's a he's a he's a great game designer, but yeah, same same thing. I I don't ever win. Okay, so next question uh, we've got from Alexan uh, Alexandra. I hope I'm pr pronouncing that correctly. Uh, how does Edge and Fires, with the addition of Tales of the Ancients, compare as an experience to Reign of War? Great question. So the thing I think that John did that's really great is he's made this content where it all kinds of mixes and matches in these meaningful ways, right? So. For example, if you want, to, if you really like Reign of War, and a lot of people do, I, I personally, I'm with John. I really like Edge, and I like Fires. I love Reign of War, but I love this sort of really condensed, tight version that uh, Edge and Fires is. You can combine Edge and Fires to be an Omen Reign of War like experience. You can take three unit types from uh, Fires. Gifts of the Gods, uh, Rain, uh, 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 Edge of the Aegean, and you can shuffle those into Reign of War so that you have kind of like modular content. There's ways to draft. Um, Tales of the Ancients great because it, 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 int it introduces new feat cards and then it has all these reward cards. So I think, John, correct me if I'm wrong, but we have like 30 different reward tiles now that you can possibly have in a game. Uh, it adds lots and lots of replayability. I mean, just tons of replayability. A lot of people might think, well, how do you have 13 different unit types and it's gonna and it's gonna feel like it's a coherent game, but John's really thought all this stuff out. He's mapped it out and we've made it so we can sort of a la carte things in and out to create different experiences. I mean, I, of course, as the publisher, I think they're all great, but then again, I wouldn't have made them if they weren't all great. I wouldn't want to be a part of these. So I think if you're an Omen fan, you kind of have to have them all. <laughs> like, um, yeah, totally agree. Uh, I'm a newer uh, person to Omen, and it was an instant hit at home. i uh, played a lot of two-player games with my husband. We're always looking for more. There's not, in my opinion, enough of them out there that really are, are fun and quick to play, for us anyway, that uh, – we end up getting these bigger games to play with our friends, and then we don't play them two player. And and just having uh, being able to teach that to my husband, we really enjoyed it. And um, I totally beat him. And I used spirits <laughs> in the first game, which you really should not do if you've never played before. But I did it anyway, just so I could really dirty. kick his butt. I'm super dirty. All right. So next question, Matthew asks, "What's our favorite unit type?" I, John, I think you should answer this in the chat too. I know what mine is. Go for it. I like the sphinxes. Me too. I like that they're just beautifully simple. They're worth a point if they're in your hand. And, you know, in Fires, it's a smaller deck. So if you just play Fires, you, your likelihood of getting them. But they're monstrous. They're gigantic. Uh, they're colossal, so they count as two units. They're worth a victory point. Um, and then they've got, like, this really – they're the only thing with, like, a really high offering value in Fires. So they're, like, this extremely multifunctional card. And all of them are the same. None of them have any abilities – but they are all, they're like extremely utility. They've got high power, high offering value for a low coin cost. They're worth a victory point if they're in your hand and they count as two units. So they're really good at triggering, uh, making things war torn. So in my opinion, they're, they're really elegantly designed. I really like the, um, this, the, the new for um, gifts of uh, gifts and the gods, because um, we just unlocked them yesterday, the first one, the Spartoi, because I, I really like the story behind them John shared with me, and then I went and read the mythology. Um, and, yep, John says he has to choose two, the, uh, and I am I always mess that word, word up. Say that. Myrmidons. Myrmidons and Spartoi. The, it just, if you guys haven't uh, looked at the update about that, I included some of the information in there about their history, and it's really cool how those are going to come about and be, a, yeah, really great together and i think the just the mythology as always with john with these games from john that they're just really well just really interesting way. tension with the spark toy yeah. how you can play them from the discard but your opponent can play them from the discard you only get an ability there so you know if you yeah. offer them up someone else might get the benefit of playing them over on facebook uh, game and yeti hi game and yeti asks uh 
Uh, hemlock next question mark lol that is on hemlock and soulfall are on the agenda for 2019 uh, we know that people really want to see a re re-release of hemlock uh, john and i have been talking about some really interesting things on how to kind of take the hemlock universe and incorporate some cool designs that john has um uh, so yes that is something we got to get through this year first we've still got neolithic Merchants of Missouri and Mezzo from yes. John. So we still got three more games from John this year, which Mezzo is, yeah. <laughs> we saw the first mini sculpts yesterday that are massive. Yeah, massive. So cool. It's so, going to be awesome, guys. Can't wait for people to see that. Um, Chad asks uh, uh, the boxes in the background look very similar to the size in the Oniverse games from Shady Tobri. Mm -hmm. Torby, and uh, the box mentions any idea how they compare to those games? Uh, these are a little larger. These are more this Seven Wonders more like, Duel. This yeah. one is the This is Seven the Wonders right Duel. These are actually a little bit larger than they will be in the final product because, you know, we don't want to ship you a box of air. So these are going to be a, about roughly 40% smaller than what you're seeing here so that they'll kind of stack on top of this. Uh, and if you want, you can, you know, you can take and mix and match. And that way you have a smaller, a smaller version if you want to take with you. Um, so that would be my answer for that. Okay. Nicholas is asking us about the metal coins and if they're going to be the same as the Amiga. They're, they're new. They're a new, there. brand new design that is akin to the coins that we have now. Uh, and are, if you look on the campaign page, the design of the coins that are going to be on the tokens are the same design that will be on the metal coins. Um, so that they are, I think it's a really neat design and it's definitely going to let them stand out from, mm -hmm. from other editions if you choose to add those on. Um, any ideas about the next cultures? Ooh, yeah. John, do you want to? Are we allowed to say things we're thinking about? Up uh, Mesopotamia. So Mesopotamia is actually in fires. It's like Persian Mesopotamia, Bab Babylon. So you see ziggurats, you see you know Sumerian type gods, um, which very very interesting. The sort of Sumerian Babylonian kind of inter intermingling of cultures here. Um, John, do you can you go back to John? Oh, yep. Ronin, Oni, and Dishonored. Yep. So we were talking about doing Japanese, and we're talking about doing Vikings for the next set. Um, we want to kind of do a, a tour of all these different cultures, and, and the, the Omen, uh, the way that Omen approaches pantheons um, really works for basically any culture. I think John hates Egyptians because I love them, and I keep trying to talk to him about ancient aliens all the time, and he's like, no, please stop. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so, I mean, the, John, for those of you who don't know this, John is actually, John has a history degree. He has a, a very deep and profound love for cultures. Uh, it's something he tries to incorporate with, with accuracy into his games, like Neolithic. It's very true to, you know, what that's supposed to be, not just uh, cavemen riding on walls <laughs> like I thought it was, which he so, so uh, politely corrected me for. So I've learned, uh, that's, that's one thing that's cool about working with John is you actually, you get to learn about uh, all these kind of historical cultural things. Gaming Yeti uh, says that we're killing him, LOL, and we'll resurrect you with how amazing these <coughs> games are. Oh, snap. Okay, so Chad asks on Facebook, speaking of the history mythology of the game, what sort of, well, I think you just covered this, How what sort of research does John do to prepare for his games? He's, he's extremely well-versed, it seems. So I think, yeah, I think you just answered yeah, that. Yeah, John does, you know, John's educated in history. He has, uh, John, I'm so sorry uh, to, to speak for you here. I wish John was here. Um, um, yeah, John is uh, John, John has Dig. an interest. John has a, an interest in in cultures, and he has an interest in, in uh, honestly not you know Omen is Greco Roman, but it, when you see Mezzo, when you guys learn more about Mezzo, it's Central America, and it's like this meditation on kind of Mayan uh, gods, which is not really something that you see, especially done on this sort of blood ragey type game, which is pretty cool. Uh, the gods in this game are I've literally never when we hand this over to the sculptor who is a professional sculptor of 30 years he's like i don't even know what the hell some of these things are they're crazy amazing you know slug god with two masks for hands so and a, just a dude chilling on his back <laughs> like just it's really like an, it's like break it broke my brain but it's super yeah, yeah. I I mean, it. things that people have never seen john john has a really good uh love i feel like i sound like i'm in cheerleader for we john. love john john's got really great taste uh he's got he's got good aesthetic taste um, sounds like a wow. Oh, yeah. 
It does a little bit. That's awesome. Okay, uh, question from Nicholas again. Uh, let's see. Are there going to be any three or four player rules? So there were. John did have a three and four player variant at one point, I believe. It's something that we've wanted to go back and revisit. Um, it's something we do plan to address in the future. The reality is Omen is just a killer two player game. And rather than try to force it to be something that it's not, we'd rather support it and make it the best two player game it can be. Um, we will we will broach that. There is a plan to broach that subject. The stuff we're talking about for the the Japanese and the the, the Vikings is, I mean, total like revolutionary stuff for Omen. I mean, like literally taking long ships and invading far away, like setting war on places that aren't in the main cities that you have to like actually travel to and and dishonor. Like you know, the Oni come in and dishonor guys when they're dishonored. They don't work the way they're supposed to, but you can only play the Oni if you have someone that's dishonored. They only, the Oni will only work really cool. Just um, there, there's no end to the amount of content we can make for this game. Like genuinely. Well, and, and like at our house, we talked about like, this would be cool if we wanted to play with four players and we just, tournament style like mini tournament style at home i mean why not that's super fun it's it's a fair question but i yeah. mean I, I i as a publisher hate artificial player counts i, I so many people put one to five on things and the game is really a three or four player game uh I, i'm not a fan of that I'm, i won't put an artificial player count on a box yeah i uh there's a game i close friends have heard me talk about that i played at two player that i i swear now that i played it i like they should have never made it two player they should never like three player it should have just been four player i think all of us probably have a game like that where we know the player count didn't make sense once we played it so i think it's really important that you know for us as a company we really want to make sure that when we say what the player count is the game is going to play well at that player count everyone's going to be really happy with every experience of the game absolutely um, so, uh, and I feel like you guys probably who are watching this see when I see certain comments. So Kathleen Mercury, our, another one of our wonderful designers is on Facebook and she wants to know, uh, what about angry middle school teachers for Roman? As a theme? Sure. Why not? Oh boy. I think that might be what she meant. <laughs> I, I, I think John tried being a teacher and it wasn't for him. So that might be a sore subject for him. Um, I don't know, Kathleen. I'm sure you found you found a way to you found a way to to charm me into putting you in one game. I'm sure you oh. can do it again. Yeah, she's got a great game too coming up, guys, next year. So yeah. we're looking forward to that. All right, uh, last chance. Any other questions, Lindsay? We got anything else on Facebook? One coming through from Chad. Oh, we got one more from Chad. Any other questions? Feel free to throw them in the chat. The Q and A. Uh, seeing several new backers popping up while we're talking here. Thank you to everyone who's watching, who's joined us today, and who's backing while we're talking. It's really wonderful to have you here and everyone I'm who's backed so far. Uh, I love two-player games. This looks awesome. Is there going to be a sub we have sub talked, Saharan African We have theme. talked yeah. about African theme. That is something. Actually, that's where John, his, uh, his, his brain immediately went there first. And I said, you know what? Let's give people some kind of uh, something that we know that people like to get the get the get the fan base kind of growing for the game and then we'll we'll start to go and delve into some more uh, less tr uh, obvious cultures as we go along thanks thanks flip potato I love your handle uh, okay. Chad sweet this is gonna be our last question unless uh, anybody else wants to throw one in now Wakanda sure <laughs> uh, the reality is that omen is like a boxing match where one heavyweight fighter throws a massive haymaker and the other boxer has to take it on the chin until it's their turn when they get to throw a massive haymaker back. A three to four player game would be absolutely chaotic. Friendships would undoubtedly be lost. I think that that is a very good point. And so um, thanks for that extra feedback. That wasn't really a question. Yeah, yeah, support. Yeah. We like it. Thank you. You know, so, so just one more thing I really want to say is like, first of all, thank you to all the people who've been supporting the game. I mean, this is really like the, again, the, the goal for Colossal, yes, is to make games and, and to make money and to, to, to make fun for people or a company uh, naturally I'm not going to apologize for that but I, I I really you know for for John's fans and some of them who may be on the fence or who may may feel like we, we're, we're kind of taking his baby and doing something very different with it just know that Do John has been a part of all of this he's been a part of the process all along the way and like again the goal here is to help this game reach the largest audience that it possibly can. It's an excellent game. I think it's a game that deserves to be in everyone's uh, collection. I think that it's uh, 
there's a reason why seven years ago it came out and it just still continues to have people that care about it. So, you know, your support is helping to prove that point. Um, and we understand that, that some of that some people are would like to think that the game that they owned previously could be used. But again, this is this is a this is kind of Omen Reborn. This is a, a new opportunity and a bigger opportunity for this game. So if you love the game, um, you can always enjoy the one that you have. You know, John has said this and we've said it, too. If you're happy with what you have, by all means, if you want new content from the game it will be in this format this is going to be the official format it's going to have reward tiles it's going to have boards we're going to use keywords we're going to have tokens it's not we're not going to ship six thousand pounds of metal coins across the ocean and put them in every single box and so players that uh that already own a previous edition of omen and they're just on the fence and 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 maybe they just want to keep omen as is uh and they but they want to try the new format you definitely don't have to get a reign of war though we totally recommend it you could just start with fires in the east and edge or just fires or just edge if you wanted to if you haven't if you haven't gotten the previous edition of edge um so just keep that in mind and of course uh, the stretch goal expansion that we're building, I think, is going to be really awesome. It's introducing two new units. It's, it's going to have new tiles. rewards. It's going to yep. have a bunch of variable stuff. Uh, it's going to be, you know, by the end of it, it should be a, a, somewhere between a twenty-five and thirty-dollar expansion that has a lot of supplementary uh, components for people to even expand their game even more. So um, it's absolutely worth checking out. Uh, you know, if you love Omen, if you if you you've been a, a customer of John's over the years, like. I can't urge you enough to to really kind of reconsider what you you know what what you want Omen to, what Omen was and what Omen can be because that that's what that's kind of where we're coming from. We want Omen to be Seven Wonders Tool. We want it to be some game that you see in every store that that's, that's played the world over by tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of people. And I and I genuinely believe the game has that potential. So I want to say thank you both to Chad over on Facebook and Robert here on Kickstarter for your uh, positive comments about the work that we're doing and the designers we're working with. I see you've mentioned John and Grant here, obviously great designers, but I'd be remiss if we didn't mention some of the amazing first-time designers we started with this year, uh, Hervé Lamatra for Western Legends. Uh, just an incredible, cool game. Uh, really AJ pleasure Lambeth. to work on. And then AJ Lambeth, who's also on our team, who did Kamisama. We've got even more coming. I mean, we've just got a lot of really great designers, and we'll continue to highlight them on BGG and on our website as uh, to, so you guys get to know them too. So even uh, some of the designers maybe you haven't heard of or new designers, um, really proud of the people we're working with. And I think you guys will be really excited about what they're bringing to your tables uh, as we go. So continue to talk to us. Can Please give us your feedback. Really enjoy hearing from you guys. We're proud to be working with you too, John. Thank you so much, everyone. And uh, any more comments, questions, anything we can do for you, hit us up in the PMs, hit us up on the comments, and we will be here to answer your questions. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.